It's going to take long before the public has a gutsful of that carry-on. Mr uh, Chair. Jonathan Young. Thank you, Mr Chair. Well, following that, Speaker, it's very important to understand, Mr Speaker, that through this process there have been a lot of numbers bandied about. We know that solid energy have ended up or ended up in February in a situation where three hundred and ninety million dollars of debt was carried on their balance sheet. Yet we hear from the previous speaker, no, it's four hundred and then within seconds it's half a billion dollars. Mr Speaker, how can we trust anything that comes out of their mouth when such exaggeration takes place in debates like this? You know, Mr Speaker, page three of our report Page three of our report, we asked Dr Palmer whether during his time as Chair of Solid Energy the Crown had requested that Solid Energy increase its gearing. He confirmed that it had, and the aim of doing so would have been to ensure that there was more cash available, which would ultimately increase the dividend yield through a process. We asked Mr Palmer, has ever a shareholder asked you to borrow to pay the dividend? He replied, no, there was no request for that. The next sentence says, Labor members do not accept Mr Palmer's explanation. So even when it came out of the horse's mouth, these guys won't accept it. And we know further on, they ignore the international economic context. They want to lay all the blame at the government's feet. They want to do all of that. And they said in their minority review, minority view report, they said the brief amount of time given to the appearance of the current management of solid energy, as well as that given to Dr Elder and the former Chair Sir John, Par John Palmer, meant that many questions about solid energy were un unable to be asked by the committee. And they went on to say the hearing of just two hours of evidence meant that many questions from the committee members were not able to be addressed. We have the recorded transcripts that show that we had three hours of hearings, yet they put in their minority view only two. Answer that. There were many questions from the committee members that were not able to be addressed in full. Listen to this. How many questions do you think the Labour members submitted to the committee to be sent to Solid Energy in that review? 285. 285. This was the thickest, biggest, longest select committee report of a financial review probably ever in the history of this parliament. And we had tremendous answers, yes, a straight bat, yet this, these members of that committee on the other side of the House distort the truth. They distort the facts. They come up with all sorts of things that make it unclear for New Zealanders to know exactly what happened. And after Mr Palmer and Mr Dr Elder talked about the international uh, global situation regarding the coal prices, the, the, member of the, the lead member of the uh, committee from the Labor side said, now I want to ask you some substantive questions. After we had understood all about shale gas from the United States of America, how that had uh, caused uh, the coal companies to collapse, after we had heard everything about how in China uh, 33 per cent uh, of uh, reduction in steel uh, um, milling had taken place after we had heard all about how uh, in Australia they lost 50 per cent of the value of coal companies uh, when the stock market had increased. In the United States, 42 per cent of the value of, of coal companies had dropped when the Dow had increased. At the same time, understanding that there are significant global pressures around the price of coal and how this had affected uh, surprisingly, everybody around the globe was taken by surprise at what happened. Yet, all of this is completely ignored. All of this is completely ignored, and we have a tremendous lot of information put in here which is incorrect in that report from their point of view. I'd say, Mr Chair, that we have seen, we have seen a very biased attitude, that we have not seen an attitude from some members of this committee that have wanted to look at the facts and report justly so. So, Mr Chair, I think that we need to understand that solid energy are, have been and are going through some very difficult times. Yes. I believe that the Commerce Committee has sought to serve this Parliament well in presenting a very thorough report, with the exceptions of those instances that I have raised of blatant inaccuracies and blatant refusals to believe what the former chair brought to the committee. Why? Because it did not suit their agenda. 
Their agenda was to try and lay every fault at the foot Honourable of the government. Damon O'Connor. If you ever want a perfect case study of incompetent National Party oversight, then this is it. In 1998,